Hi, Dr. Cleary. Hi, how are you? I'm great. How are you doing? Um, well, thanks for having me. Oh, thank you for coming and joining me on my live. Um, so I just wanted to go ahead and um, go ahead and if you wanted to introduce yourself, Dr. Cleary, to um, the people watching. <laughs> sure. So I'm Kelly Cleary. Um, I work at FAIR, Food Allergy Research and Education. I am the Senior Director of Education and Support Programs there, and I do a lot of our patient education. Um, I'm a pediatrician. I did my fellowship in emergency medicine, but in the past few years, I've pivoted to mental health for you know, um, elementary age kids, teens, and young adults. Um, and I'm a mom of four, and one of my um, four children has uh, multiple anaphylactic food allergies. So that's really what brought me to FAIR to kind of bring together my passion for food allergies and mental health and, you know, education. So thanks for having me. Oh, thank you so much. Um, so we'll just go ahead and get started. So um, this will be a short Q&A session, and I encourage you all to submit any questions that you may have um, during this discussion. So Dr. Clary, um, with food allergies, we found out that my oldest had a food allergy to dairy when he was an infant, when we were giving him formula. Now, uh, can you share your journey of discovering your child's food allergies as a mom and as a physician, and how has this diagnosis impacted your family's daily life? So we found out that my son was uh, food allergic really early on as well. So he um, had really, really severe eczema, so much so that even while he was sleeping, if he would move his head, he would get a, a row of hives oh. um, and wake up you know, trying to almost as a six week old, you know, scratch his head. Um, so we knew that that something was going on. Um, so he was diagnosed really early with multiple um, food allergies. So when he was first diagnosed, he probably had, you know, 20 allergies um, that we recognized. And, you know, our journey, um, you know, was it was never a smooth one. Um, we he's experienced anaphylaxis multiple times. Um, but I think that, you know, as he is now almost a teenager, he'll be 13 in a couple of months, um, you know, the resilience that has been created, you know, because of his experiences is really great to see. Um, he's just a strong kid who anything that comes his way, he can handle. We are a food allergy family, even though my other kids don't have food allergies. So, you know, you ask, how does it affect our family? If we are sitting down at a dinner table, my other kids can recite his food allergies and they are, <laughs> you know, watching his back and they they are his support system. So, you know, again, it, it has been a journey, but I think, you know, the resilience that I see at the end of this is, has been wonderful for oh, them. That's great to hear because um, my son, my two children, they're seven and four, and whenever we go grocery shopping, they're always like, oh, are we allergic to this? They're very aware of what's going on. Um, so as far as, you know, with our children, when they interact with, you know, other kids, how has this affected their social interactions, like play dates, birthday parties, uh, family gatherings, things like that? Um, so as you as you know, you know this it, it is it does have a big effect. I remember you know when my son went on his first play date, and I you know, spoke to the parent before, made sure they understood, you know, what he was, you know, what he wasn't allowed to eat. We packed his little lunchbox so he had mm -hmm. some snacks, gave the epinephrine auto injector to make sure that he was going to be protected. And then I parked my car out in front of their house <laughs> and stayed there <laughs> for the entire play date. Yep. <laughs> and, you know, my five-year-old son at the time got into the car and he was like, so do all moms would eat outside? And I was like, yes, well, yes, yes. they do. Um, but that's, you know, that's the difference. And, and for, I think, the food allergic parent, that's the journey, mm -hmm. right? I don't mm -hmm. do that anymore. But for that first, that transition period, I did. And I, yeah. you know, I had to make sure that 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 I was there and, and, you know, couldn't let go at all. But that's the journey. And now as, you know, an almost 13 year old, we're not in that that same place. But I, you know, as you mentioned, birthday parties, I, mm -hmm. I always do mention that he's 12 and a half. Yeah. And you, you know, this with kids, he's probably gone to eight to 10 birthday parties a year, mm -hmm. and he's never been able to have a piece of birthday cake, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's, that Absolutely. just puts in perspective what, yeah. 
these kids and, and adults with food allergies are going through. Yeah, especially like, um, uh, you know, with birthday parties, I'm always having to bring an alternative for my child or even communicating with their teachers. If there's birthday parties, they have a backup for my children. So at least they feel included to what's going on and, um, and things like that. So that's, yeah, that's the journey that we're going well, through. <laughs> I, I always had a stash of food allergy safe yes. things for him yeah. in my bag. And, okay. and I did the same at school. I knew yeah. what what treats would be an actual treat for him. So it wasn't that, you know, if everyone else is getting cupcakes, he was getting, you know, yeah. a couple of crackers. I would keep something that I knew he really wanted there. Um, and if it if it arose, they just went into the freezer, got it, and he oh, was cool. able to enjoy something, you know, just as fun as everybody else. Oh, good. Um, so like speaking with the school, when it comes to the school, um, how do you communicate with them to ensure that they're their needs are met and that it's safe as well. Like, um, as far as, you know, if anything were to happen, things like that. So I ask a lot of questions, <laughs> um, especially when my son was at a transition point and going to a new school. So, you know, and he, that was this year going to middle school, mm -hmm. but when he went to, you know, kindergarten and then elementary school. And the first thing that I like to do, and, and again, you know, the biggest way to communicate is to fully communicate, you know, let everyone know honestly what your child's needs yeah. are, and then work with the school to figure out what is the best plan to get that accomplished. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I would always start out with what's the school policy? You know, mm -hmm. where do they keep their epinephrine auto injectors? Who is trained on using them? Um, you know, how many people in the building know how to use them? How do you handle um, lunchtime? What do you do if the teacher is absent? What do you do on a field trip? So those are all questions that I've always asked. And then in terms of individual needs, you know, people should know that if you have a food allergy, you know, I always provide an emergency care plan that gives what my son's symptoms are, what he's allergic to, his medications. And then, you know, there are other written plans that that people should advocate for if you know with with food allergies mm -hmm. so one of those is a 504 plan and having a written plan that shows what accommodations your particular child needs because of the food allergy because food allergies are recognized as a disability under the ada oh, so no. you know really okay. so par so parents should know that they're eligible for that um and be able to talk to administrators and teachers um to to see what they need to to have the safest environment for their child that's really um, interesting because I'm very familiar with the 504 plan and I thought that was just, you know, with learning accommodations, I didn't realize it was also for allergies as well. So that's really interesting to know and mm -hmm. that you've mentioned that to raise awareness about it. So for people who don't know about that, so that's really Yeah, good. allergies are considered yeah. a hidden disability. Oh, and, when, and when you think yeah. about it, you know, allergies will affect the way that uh, a student can eat in mm -hmm. school, right? So that, that yeah. is part of how, how did your, um, you know, how does, how does your day to day within school change? And I'm right. not a lawyer, but that's certainly, yeah. you know, something to consider if needed. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so what are the new ways to pre uh, for prevention of food allergies and how can parents um, start a conversation with their provider about prevention and treatment options and things like that? So prevention um, really has evolved over the past 10 or so years. So about now, probably 10 plus years ago, there was a really big study called the LEAP study, um, which looked at introducing peanuts early in the diet um, to kids that were at high risk for peanut allergy. And what they found was that increase, uh, when you introduce peanut, and again, in a safe form, so thinned out peanut butter or in peanut butter, you know, peanut puffs, but a safe form for a baby, um, that that in a high risk in infant for food allergy reduced the, uh, reduced the rate of having a peanut allergy by 80%. Oh, okay. um, now, what's so interesting about that is that 10 years ago or 12 years ago, when I had my son, that wasn't the 
what was given out that wasn't yes. what the guidance was we were yes. actually told to avoid but that just shows you know yeah. the beauty of medicine which is this process of learning and now it is really recommended um that we introduce these foods early um in the diet so you know not as the first food that you're introducing but really if, if the child you know talk to your pediatrician see if your child is ready um and you know the pediatrician is really important in guiding families about early introduction. But really, we're finding um, that that early introduction, even in high risk infants, is reducing um, you know the rate of peanut allergy by about eighty percent. Oh, okay, great. Um, so, for high risk infants, what do you consider are, is considered high risk? So so again, this would be talking to your pediatrician okay. individually, but okay. um, you know where the the studies have defined high risk infants is if infants have very very severe eczema or an egg allergy. Oh. Now it's really important that if you have those high, if you if you're in that category, that you do talk to your pediatrician because those okay. are the exact same infants that would really benefit oh. from early introduction. But talk okay. to your pediatrician. That's that is where I think knowing what's out there and knowing what the guidance is opens that door for communications with your medical provider. Okay. Great. Um, and lastly, uh, what strategies have you used and do you suggest for other parents to foster a supportive environment, both at home and in social settings? Um, I, it, it struck a chord with me when you said your kids ask, you know, I, am I allergic to this? Am I allergic I to that? Yeah. And I think that what I have done to really try to balance mm. things is I don't like to use, you know, or I like yeah. to use and okay. so instead of saying, you know, I like to say to my son, okay, you know, you want to go on this sleepover and mm -hmm. you need to be safe. So oh, how do okay. we do it? It's not yeah. one or the other for us. That's so, true. For, so for us, it's really about knowing what's important to us as a family mm -hmm. and him as a, a 12 year old boy yeah. and trying to make those things happen. So if it was something that he saw that, you know, he can't have, well then let's go home and try to make it so that it's allergy safe. Yes. Um, and I think that that fosters a, an environment of strength. Yeah. Because it, it's like, it's, it's important, especially at that age is you want them to feel included, you know, with things like that. So you don't want them to feel um, like they're ignored or separated stuff. So that's really good. Thank you so much for sharing that. Mm -hmm. um, so well, before we leave this evening, tonight's live will be on my Instagram feed as well as Vindico's Instagram and YouTube page in case you missed this segment. Um, there will be a survey tied to this campaign and giving away five $100 Visa gift cards if you complete the survey and it'll be linked below. So thank you so much, Dr. Cleary, for joining in on my live and thank you so much for raising awareness about this, especially for families with food allergies and also families who you know don't have who those kids don't have food allergies as well just raising awareness overall thank you it's i think you you are exactly right both for food allergy families and non-allergic families yeah. awareness is key so thank you for yes. having me thank you so much doctor have a good night Bye.